Hey guys, welcome back. So now getting into Silver Surfer Black, which is starting off pretty crazy from the gate, <laughs> but that's Donny Cates for you. And my rule of thumb is if his name is on it, just buy it because one, you already know it's going to be good. And two, you already know it's going to add value to anything of his that you've read before. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so you can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so before we get into Silver Surfer Black, real quick I just want to set the stage for where this is taking place. Because when we hop into Silver Surfer Black, it actually begins where the Calamity had left off in the New Guardians of the Galaxy. When Euros, the brother of Thanos, had called a meeting inviting pretty much every hero in the galaxy in reference to the last will and testament of Thanos pretty much giving them the update about his new body. And I got a link down in the description if you guys need to get more familiar with that. But during that meeting when the Black Order pretty much crashed the party, this is where things got wild. Because when they arrived here catching all of the heroes off guard with the intention of stealing back the body of Thanos, they were aware at this point when they arrived here that they were ridiculously outnumbered. And you can say what you want, but the Black Order is not finna beat the Silver Surfer, Cosmic Ghost Rider, Beta Ray Bill, along with Moon Dragon, the Star Jammers. I want to say Gladiator was there as well, like it's, it's not gonna happen. And they were pretty much aware of this, and this is why Proxima Midnight had used a device which pretty much tore open the fabric of space and time, which created an anomaly that sucked everybody in, except for a few that were able to escape. And the few that did escape were much thanks to Beta Ray Bill, using Storm Stormbreaker, which had tied to it Cosmic Ghost Rider's chains of Sidorak to where he was able to pull himself out with a few others. And this is where Silver Surfer Black picks up on the other side of that black hole, like inside of it. Because at the time that this happened, he was the one person on the inside who had the most, if any, control to do anything once they were sucked in. And because that, it's here that we find out that he was the one who tied the chains of Sidorak to Stormbreaker in order to help those who we'd seen in Guardians of the Galaxy number one pull their way back out. But so now as for the rest of the heroes who are like drifting hopelessly throughout space and time, they're all really subject to just wherever this vortex takes them if it doesn't tear them apart. And Norn Rad, who's really fighting to keep himself together in all of this, he also uses his power cosmic to fill out this anomaly using his power cosmic and his cosmic awareness and filling it out much like I would imagine a surfer just filling out a wave, but in this case in the middle of a tsunami. But with doing so and holding himself together just enough, he finds a weak point within this wormhole and he uses what power he can conjure in order to break that weak point open and let this wave wave of heroes into safety, or at least in some point in time, to where these heroes are no longer in this wormhole getting torn apart or being dragged into absolute nothingness. And Norton is not even sure like what point in time that they're being dropped off at. Like the only thing he is sure about is that wherever they're going is better than where they were. But after giving all the other heroes at least a chance to survive, this left Norn to himself falling for years into a void which one gave him time to heal over those years, but still no certainty of a destination if any that he would ever have or if he would stop falling. But while falling for years he would see flickers of light to where he noticed that something is killing in the dark, but yet instead still he sees it at a distance that is like eons away. And at this point with him having barely enough strength to conjure his board, he manifests his board, crawls on top of it, still weak at this point, and he makes his way there swiftly. And when he arrives to what appears to be this planet, he's met here by like three unnamed figures who speak to him an old language to which he's a little bit rusty at, but he interprets that they're telling him that their god is master. And so I gotta say real quick, just the way that these three look, they look much like they're members of the Orisha. And though I can't exactly put my fingers on like who exactly is who, like the style choice of their illustration just reminds me of that. Cause if you guys remember back when we talked about Killmonger getting his own symbiote and absorbing Bast, in that video I talked a little bit about the Orisha. And they are like your ancient pantheon to which Bast belongs to, and they're also the original pantheon who had helped the first settlers of Wakanda take that land from the beasts and the creatures who inhabited that land before. Which would be pretty wild if this is them, because it would line up kind of perfect with those old tales and that history and a lot of the lore that ta Coates had laid out back in 2016-2017, especially with some of these beasts and creatures quote unquote looking a lot like the outriders who were sucked into that black hole as well, which would be completely nuts if that hive minded species ended up tying into Wakandan history that way, like that would be crazy. 
but the figures standing at the gate they do very much remind me of the Orisha and if you want to get caught up on a bit more of their history I got a link down in the description where you can check out my video about Killmonger getting his own symbiote and more of the story about what happened to the symbiote race thousands of years in the future from our present day but still well before the end of time when Loki obtains the necro sword from Ego but so now back to the Silver Surfer with arriving here at this gate they immediately see him as a threat and as a result they begin to attack him and he fights them off the best that he can within his weakened state but even with doing so like he is losing miserably and because he had let the other heroes out somewhere a long time in space he knows that throughout this fight he's pretty much on his own which is kind of messed up and because of that he has to come to a resolve within his own means and with doing so like while these beings are like stocked on top of him he releases an energy ball from his hand which arises upward emitting a bright light to free him from their restraints and this light that he's created knocks them back well enough to get him free but with doing so and what he's done is pretty much created this infant star which continues to rise up and illuminates this planet but when he more or less gets these beings out of his way and he reapproaches this gate he's aware that what's behind this gate has the power to enslave gods and it's then that he hears a voice from behind the gate that says hello little son and it snatches him inside and upon his entry it's here that he meets no the god of the symbiotes which is insane and i gotta say like back in guardians of the galaxy when everyone was sucked into that black hole like i was hoping for something like this like i was hoping for someone anyone to go back and explore this history with no and either witness him from afar off let alone get this close but with the heroes getting sucked throughout time and space i was truly hoping that somehow someone would come back here and meet no because the way that donny kate's original set up his character and his history there is a lot of time to go back and play with and even going back to the notion of what he was doing during that time and even possibly who else he may have came across throughout the course of time or even what we've seen here happen with the silver surfer to which i feel like this happening with the silver surfer within his own series is just like perfect especially with it being done with like your jack kirby-esque type of art because y'all already know who the real silver surfer is kind of nonsense i'm gonna write you up you understand do you understand? Yes, sir. You have to set an example even in the face of stupidity. Now, everybody that reads comic books knows that Kirby Silver Surfer is the only true Silver Surfer. Now, am I right or wrong? <laughs> You're right, sir. All right. Get out of here. Yes, sir. But I've always felt like Tradmore's art has held this inspiration from Jack Kirby, which kind of makes the story feel like it's being told like back in your Kirby era. Or maybe that's just me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. But with the Silver Surfer who's pulled in here by No, the god of the symbiotes, to whom he puts up a fight with, and for the most part he doesn't do too bad. But it's here where he goes against No that he actually recognizes him from the future. Because we're told prior to this point, traveling all the way back to the beginning of time, at one point where the Silver Surfer was scouting planets for Galactus, he had came across Clintar, and at that time when he was observing this planet and seeing if it was fit for Galactus to feed on, it had actually pulled him in, and it was then that he realized that this wasn't a planet, but it was actually a prison. And when he was pulled into this prison, he had seen Null, and Null had seen him. And it's here at the beginning of time when he recalls that memory, that he's like, okay, I kind of got an idea who this guy is. And of course, while he's here meeting Null, Null makes it pretty clear himself. Like, he tells the surfer that he is Null, he's the god of the darkness, and the darkness is literally everywhere, so he's pretty much the god of everything. And with Null saying this and proclaiming his ownership, he then takes his hold on the silver surfer. And he begins attaching the symbiotes of his creation to Norrin in order to make him the voice. Knight, which is also wild with the Silver Surfer more or less becoming your true first host with no giving him a symbiote and making him the Void Knight and I'm not even going to try and imagine like how powerful the Silver Surfer is in this stage with power cosmic cosmic awareness and the symbiote though i would also imagine that some of his powers would kind of contradict the others like you're not finna go fly through the sun with this thing which is something the silver surfer could do but i don't think the void knight would do but with no making norn the void knight he sees some of the surfer's memories and he recognizes that he has broken the light before and he tells norn because of this that he knows what must be done and it's very likely that no at this point being that he still possesses the necro sword that at this point he's already fought and killed a celestial and this is taking place at a point in time when he's preparing for payback and initially setting things up to reclaim the universe and return it to darkness but it's during this time that Norrin hears a voice call him and it calls him Harold while blasting a beam of light onto him and like telling him this is gonna hurt brace yourself but essentially creating a window of opportunity for the silver surfer to get away but once he's free of the symbiote he then tries to go against no but that same voice is just like nah big fella don't do it big fella like you ain't ready to face him big fella and just follow my voice and get out of there as quick as you can and 
being smart, the Silver Surfer takes heed and he gets out of there. But it's here where we see Null call the three who he had seen earlier, who we also find out are his children, but to whom he refers to as his acolytes. And for the record, so no one gets confused, these aren't your acolytes from WWF. <laughs> just so nobody gets that confused. But he tells the three of them to watch the throne because he's going to leave for a short while because he has a star to kill. And upon leaving them, he takes the Necro Sword and he mounts Grendel, which is surprisingly fast enough to keep up with the Silver Surfer. And for Norrin, who was just like, man, I felt something cold on the back of my neck, the next thing I knew, the cold had teeth and those teeth was right behind him. But with the Surfer knowing that in his condition especially, he was not outrunning No. So he had to think quick and he turned around, created another energy ball and pretty much flew it right through this guy. And I mean, Grendel took this dwarf star right through the Ruta to the Tuta, which then ignited and dissolved the Grendel, throwing No off of it into space, but yet and still leaving the Surfer with part of the Void Knight symbiote still attached to him and spreading over his body. But it's here with him barely having get away that he's drifting off in space that we find out the person who's been talking to him this whole time and leading him away from Null, as it turns out, it's Ego the Living Planet, who tells Norrin that he's here to help him kill a god, which is crazy seeing Ego show up here, especially with what we've seen take place throughout Jason Aaron's run leading up to the War of Realms and Ego's involvement with the Necro Sword like eons in the future, like this is wild. But that'll do it for this one guys. And so now at this point in time, at the beginning of time, with the Silver Surfer getting away and meeting up with Ego, he still has the piece of that symbiote attached to his hand and no floating around somewhere in space in the darkness ready for round two. Hey guys, welcome back. So now hopping back into Silver Surfer Black, which in my opinion is like a testament to Marvel's commitment to telling not only a single story with a beginning, middle, and end, but instead really seizing the opportunity of going millions of years into the past and millions of years into the future and filling the void of many untold secrets and introducing new concepts of things that were left unexplained. And in my opinion, with this, they're doing a great job. And I mean like everywhere from the origin of Null to War of Realms, Black Panther, House of X, Powers of Ten, and the list goes on. But as far as their method with Donny Cates' Silver Surfer Black, it's taking a very unique approach that yet again shows us why these stories are working so well. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so in our recent talks about Silver Surfer Black, we got into the setup for this arc, which began with the new Guardians of the Galaxy and a number of characters being time displaced, which is something at the time that you could tell just as a comic book reader that with a number of heroes getting thrown into a black hole, like this has got to be a setup for something later down the line, whether it be some type of spinoff, which is usually what happens, but when that happens it's more so to the point of bolstering that specific event that the anomaly took place, like Infinity Wars for example, with the universe being folded in half and a number of the characters being merged together, much of those spinoffs really just played into that narrative itself, just shining more light on the main event of Infinity Wars. But with Silver Surfer Black, Donny Cates, he's shown us one of the better forms of execution with rolling the aftermath that we had seen with the anomaly that had taken place with the new Guardians of the Galaxy and rolled it into the new series of the Silver Surfer, which is not like a spinoff or a tie-in, but using it to tell a whole new story, which at its core so far just feels like a good Silver Surfer series. And one of the best parts of this series, which is why it's one of my favorites right now, is the fact that it's placed Norrin Rad the Silver Surfer millions of years in the past and with doing so it's allow us to see not only the existing Marvel history unfold but also doing this in a way where we see the new history and more specifically the history with No, the god of the symbiotes who we're recently finding out has been here this entire time and the way that this is done it just works very well but so now like we talked about where we had seen the Silver Surfer encounter No, and at the time where he did the Surfer is in very much a weakened state and mostly from saving the heroes from being torn apart after being sucked into that black hole and at the time the surfer really being one of the only people who could withstand that and using that advantage to save everyone else but with that leaving him in a weakened state this left him vulnerable to the point to where he was almost taken over by no but at this point in time with no in relation to his history he hasn't really met anyone quite like the silver surfer and the closest comparison would probably be the celestials when they first arrived creating life and planets and essentially bringing light into what was previously no's kingdom of endless darkness but with the surfer 
Cooper barely getting away from Null, and with doing so still having a piece of the symbiote which Null attached to him still remaining on his left arm, soon after he ran into Ego, the living planet, who at this point in time is still a very young planet, and with us seeing him here there's really no explanation so far to whether his original origin still remains intact or if that's changed at all. Because back in the Mighty Thor issue number 228, at the time we got the origin of Ego, and I'm pretty sure at this time it was Jerry Conway and Joe Sennett with Conway's writing and Sennett's elaborate illustrations, but at the time this gave us a flashback into the history of Ego, which I'm hoping stays the same because if you think about it, it's very similar to the Silver Surfer, with both of them experiencing the tragic loss of their home planet and its people, but in the case of Ego, it's quite different. And like I mentioned, this is something that Thor discovered back in Mighty Thor, issue 228, and really issue 227 and 228. And at the time when Thor, Hercules, and Fire Lord had teamed up with Galactus, going up against Ego, they reached a point where Thor traveled to the center of Ego to where he saw within the mind of Ego his dark origin. Because for Ego, whose name was originally Egros, he was once a scientist who attempted to save the people of his home planet from being destroyed by a supernova and with doing so hiding them within bunkers near the planet's core. And so now at the time this wasn't like your regular supernova. And the reason why was because this is something that occurred as an experiment from a guy known as the Stranger who was potentially risking the lives of billions in an experiment. But with Ego attempting to save his people by hiding him in these bunkers, he didn't make it down to the bunker in time. And when he was caught in the blast of the supernova, he absorbed the lives of 2 billion men, women, and children. And for millions of years, this has been like his guilt, his secret, and his living nightmare, with living portions of these inhabitants still existing within him to a degree. And in the ways that this is similar with the Silver Surfer, who isn't necessarily 100% innocent, his story is very similar because originally when Galactus arrived on his home planet Zen La, he presented Galactus with a bargain to spare his home planet Zen La in exchange for his services as a herald to find Galactus other planets to feed on, which once again doesn't make him that innocent with that decision. But around this time that he meets Ego, he also continues to have these dreams or visions of life back on Zen La, very close to the time of the arrival of Galactus. But what's different within these visions is for him, they end quite differently because in the end, instead of Galactus arriving, it's himself and he's the cause of destruction to his own people. And you can just imagine for him that is terrifying on a number of levels because for one, he exists in this dream as his old self as an inhabitant of Zen La who's terrified of its destruction but at the same time he's also the harbinger of death and the cause of that destruction and him doing this with himself being overtaken by the influence of No but not being able to stop it. And even in this dream, his original self, Norrin Rad, he attempts to make his plea and save his people, but the monster that the Silver Surfer has become, he doesn't speak, he doesn't bargain, he just arrives at Zen La and he does his job. And this vision or nightmare could very much be to the credit of that piece of the symbiote that is still attached to the Silver Surfer, which can definitely see into his mind and into his history, but also it's very possible that this is also a look deeper into Norrin Rad, who has the history after becoming the Silver Surfer of leading Galactus to different planets, which still had life Life on them and over the ages he's witnessed the death of billions without batting an eye. But fast forward to now, we know that that's something that does bother Norn, and it's very much a result of meeting different people throughout the ages, most notably the Fantastic Four, but that's a maturity that he's gained throughout the course of time. But while he's here speaking to Ego, he asks for permission to land on the surface, which Ego is pleased to hear because most people don't just ask to land on the surface, they just be landing there. But when the surfer arrives, they begin to discuss a number of issues, one of the main issues being no, and the other being the symbiote that's attached to the surfer that he just can't shake. But it's not too long into this conversation where an object crashes into Ego making its way to his center, which causes Ego a tremendous amount of pain because when this is happening, it appears to be killing him. And the surfer, he immediately goes in to remove this threat. But when he does, he tells Ego like, I'm not trying to take advantage of your pain, but you gotta let me know that you will help me when this is over to go against No. To which Ego agrees as the Silver Surfer continues. And so now at this point, a few things are happening because one, with the surfer digging beneath the layers of Ego, it's a little bit more difficult than it would be if he were at 100%, but even still with him being who he is, it's not like a big challenge for him. But at this point in time with the surfer being weakened with his travel all the way back here in history, he's also extremely weakened from all the dwarf stars that he made to fight off No. But he also admits that this object that's attached to him, it's causing rapid atomic degeneration, which is more or less causing him to be undone, giving his weakened state. But also with him doing this, it reminds me a lot of those old issues of Thor, when we had seen him travel through to the center of Ego, back when we discovered Ego's origin. But in Thor's case, if I remember correctly, I believe he had taken the route which Egros had created for his people to be hidden within the core versus the Silver Surfer who's just burrowing through each layer. But for the Surfer who, once again, this would have been a cakewalk 
Walk 4 if he were at 100% and granted for many others they couldn't make it through two or three of these levels, especially with like your fifth layer being made of solid diamonds. But for the Silver Surfer because he's so powerful due to his power cosmic, even in this weakened state, he admits that he just feels a little warm. Which is still crazy because this is the guy who's used to like flying through suns. But with doing this on top of everything that's already fighting against the Surfer and causing him not to be at his peak performance, he also has to battle against Ego's immune system which is also trying to save Ego's life and he can't just kill them all off because if he does essentially that'll kill Ego as well if not immediately then sometime in the near future but when he arrives here at Ego's core he comes to find out that the object that crash landed on Ego and made its way here it's actually a very familiar object which opens up a whole nother can of worms in the middle of this huge conflict because when he gets here he discovers that the object that crashed here was Lifebringer 1 and so now for anybody who's just new to comics or not sure what Lifebringer 1 is this is the beginning of Galactus in the Marvel Universe as we know it, with Lifebringer 1 being like the incubator which allowed Galactus to evolve and survive after entering this universe. And prior to this point, the way that this was explained back in Ultimates issue 2 back in 2015, Galactus had been one of the sole survivors of his universe at that time who were dedicated to just preserving life period, because for them if they were to perish, all life as they knew it would cease to exist. And in a way this is a characteristic that has stuck with Galactus even throughout the years to this day. But back at the time when him and his crew had encountered a mega cosmic storm that was going to take them out, this is the event that essentially took out his entire crew and caused him to cross over into the Marvel Universe as we know it. And even at the time when this happened, he had mentioned that he could hear the universe calling him, telling him that he must survive. And when this took place and his ship and his crew were destroyed, this mega cosmic ray storm, it had also turned out to be his ticket into the Marvel Universe. And when he arrived, because of their advanced technology, his ship began to rebuild itself into life bringer one which protected and sustained him as a sole survivor who would eons later come out transformed and evolved as the galactus that we were originally introduced to which is completely crazy to see the silver server encounter at this point in time but that'll do it for this one guys i really like the combination of null ego the silver surfer and galactus within this narrative because prior to this point i never really thought about how much they all have in common but the crazy scenario at this point that the surfer has with him needing to save ego and he he can't kill galactus Galactus because the universe needs Galactus. Hey guys, welcome back. So now getting back into Silver Surfer Black, which so far has done two pretty huge things with first going back very close to the beginning and revisiting the very young Marvel Universe. And with doing so, Donny Cakes takes the opportunity to show us a bit more of what Noah was doing around this time. But in addition to that, throughout this series, we've also have the element of the Silver Surfer who's been thrown back into this time by the Black Order. And he's confronted with the challenge of doing what's right versus doing what's needed to be done to survive. And at the sum of these challenges were brought here to the arrival of Galactus. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week and don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so just jumping back in from where we left off, with the Surfer going through a number of things at this point, being weakened by traveling here in the past, to where through that transit he saved pretty much every hero who was sucked into that black hole, and then on top of that when arriving facing off with No, which was very much more flight than fight, which also took a toll on him with him exerting so much cosmic energy, creating dwarf stars in order to get away. But with his encounter with No, when the Surfer was given a symbiote and under No's control for a short time, even though he made his way out, the residual cost is still lingering with him, which partially still has him connected to Null, and with that leading him to meeting with and allying with Ego, there's still this haunting factor of Null coming after Norn that's like building up in the background. But along with meeting Ego, it's like the trouble just doesn't stop, because not long after, the Surfer discovers that something has crashed into Ego, which is essentially killing and consuming him, and is here with the Silver Surfer turns into the Silver Surgeon. But upon going to Ego's core, Norn comes to find out that what has arrived here is Lifebringer 1, which is like your life Raft slash incubator of Galactus, and upon discovering it, the Surfer immediately removes it from Ego. And with doing so, do keep in mind, like prior to going in, the Surfer had made this deal with Ego, like, look, if I can save you, I'm gonna need your help going against Null, which was a proposal to which Ego agreed. And it wasn't like one of those things where the Surfer was like, well, if you say no, I'm not gonna do it. But it was more like the Surfer trying, and then you know, if it does work, 
worked, then well, I'd appreciate your help as well. And we come to find out that it did work, that Norrin did save Ego, and after doing so, Ego did remind him that, hey, when the time comes, just call for me and I'll be at your side. But at this point, with the surfer having shared much of his future history with Ego, and because of this, Ego's pretty much aware, like right off the bat, like, okay, that must be Galactus, your creator. And at this point, Ego's curious and he inquires to the surfer, like, what will you do with him, being that you discovered him at this point now? And the surfer's just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> like just one little push into this dwarf star and this is gonna be our little secret which just reminds me of like that old age of ultron deleted scene where hawkeye had seen that quicksilver was still alive so he like looked around and put his hand over his mouth like come on man that's gotta be like the best deleted scene ever and not even so much a deleted scene more so than like a blooper because it wasn't exactly something that was scripted but if you think about it it would have worked very well with the story and we'll just have to see if something like that just pops up in wandavision which would be really interesting <laughs> but as far as the surfer who's come to this point where he truly must decide is this what he wants to do is this who he wants to become and with debating over this and thinking about the countless lives that'll be saved including him and his wife with those reasons he deems this decision to be necessary but with making this decision and also taking this route it also pushes him back into that recent nightmare to where he had seen himself fully consumed in darkness and was he himself who visited his home world rather than galactus and destroyed all of his people and this dark silver surfer he wouldn't negotiate like galactus did he he just showed up, didn't say a word, and he did what he came to do, which was likely foreshadowing the possible outcome of this situation, with Galactus one way or another being needed in the universe to bring balance, and if this time display surfer gets rid of him, then someone's gonna need to take his place, and that someone will very likely be him, which is a crazy concept which would bring this whole dream into reality in a very messed up way. But this leaves the surfer with the decision of do I leave things alone and let them play out the way that they should, or do I interfere and risk becoming what I hate the most? And Nora more or less just comes to the place of, well, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm totally going to push this dude into this star. But with showing commitment to that decision, just before he can act, he's met by the arrival of Uatu the watcher who is once again doing more than watching and the surfer tries to remind him quickly of that because though the watchers have made their decision not to interfere and mainly because when they've tried to help before this led to a race destroying themselves with the technology that the watcher had given them but Watu has always been that one to still step out and make his attempts to prohibit anything that may alter a universe drastically or potentially create an altered timeline and that's the main gist of what he informs the surfer of here and he lets him know that he's seen the other realities that have branched out he's seen the reality which Norin has came from which led him here and he lets Norrin know that killing Galactus is not an action that will grant Norrin redemption nor will it bring anybody back but even throughout this conversation when the watcher mentions the different realities that he has seen like one where Norrin never becomes the surfer and he grows old with his wife and children and another where he dies alone on Zen La but he also mentions another where he lives to the end of time and in that reality he wills Mjolnir to where he eventually dies at the hand of Thanos which is very much what we had seen in early 2018 I think it was in Thanos wins which makes me think about one of the most frequently asked questions that I've seen you guys asking in the comments on this playlist for Silver Surfer Black and one of the most intriguing questions as well which is like will Donny Cates tie this Silver Surfer into the one that we'd seen towards the conclusion of Thanos wins when he came in at the end wielding Mjolnir millions of years in the future to where he eventually was killed by Thanos well two Thanoses like wh what is Thanos in the plural because it was more than one Thanos but either way just to address this I'll say as of right now we still don't know but in Silver Surfer Black issue 4 we at least got the reference with the watcher acknowledging that he had seen this go down and in my opinion at this point I feel like it's more of an honorable mention especially with everything going on with the symbiotes and with Null I feel like we would come to that resolve first before we get to that future Silver Surfer the fallen one where we actually find out how he became worthy and trust me I hope they do because a lot of the stuff that he's being tested with now it would make for very good reason for him to become worthy but that's one of those things we just gotta wait and see how it pans out but we at least got the reference early on so that if later on things do take that turn with it being mentioned here it'll be a much smoother transition especially if the surfer goes full ios 13 dark mode which would be a pretty cool explanation to why he's much darker millions of years in the future but as far as getting back to his conversation with uatu the server is like super conflicted with the thought of him taking action or taking no action both 
seeming like the wrong thing to do, and Iwatu letting him know that either way he won't interfere, but also suggesting to the surfer that before he takes action, at least take counsel from the person that's inside. And then perhaps after having this discussion with Galactus, who at this point is still Galen, then perhaps this will enlighten the surfer and give him a better idea of what he should do. Because at the end of the day, he's still got Noah coming for him. And so when the surfer reaches in and touches the mind of Galen, it's almost as if he gets a glimpse of the Black Winter which fell on the reality of Galen before entering this reality. And rising from the death of Trillions, he sees Galen within his own mind represented as Galactus. And it's crazy for a couple of reasons because the surfer, who's seen a lot of death in his lifetime, he also describes this experience like a little overwhelming, even for him. Which also makes sense because it is an entire universe dying. But I gotta say, it also makes me curious about this reality where Galactus comes from, which we know so little about, but also with the surface curiosity, you then have the whole idea of this Black Winter, which he questions if this was an anomaly or an attack, which is something that I'm now super curious to know. Because on the surface, it reminds me a bit of Hunger, who is a creation of Jim Starlin, and he's a parasite which feeds on realities. And we talked about him for a bit back when we talked about Thanos becoming death, and I'll leave that link down below if anyone needs to catch up with that. But one of the main reasons why hunger comes to mind is one he entered this reality from an alternate one and initially doing so by tricking Galactus to let him in but when he arrived here he found certain issues with certain beings like the Silver Surfer who he couldn't absorb or dominate and it would be interesting to see if the reasoning for that was tied to some provision which Galactus had put in the Silver Surfer if we find out at a later time that hunger was involved with the Black Winter. And like I said, I'll leave the link in the description when we talk more about hunger and Thanos becoming death because I truly believe like if we do get an explanation about more of Galactus's history, one, it should definitely build off the history that we've seen within the Ultimates issues, but also tie a bit of familiarity with a couple other characters who have a bit of a more obscure history, much like hunger or maybe even no, rather than introducing a whole nother new face. And I mean, that's just my thoughts on that. But as the surfer enters into the mind of Galactus, or Galen I should say, he immediately notices that Galen perceives him as a predator, which makes a lot of sense because at this point in time, it, it makes sense for Galen to have a post-dramatic mindset because the dude literally lost everything. But after seeing these crazy representations that were more so projected from the mind of Galen in an expression of defense, the surfer then tells Galen to show him his real face, to which soon after he does, and the surfer, he just goes in like, well, okay, so I'm here to kill you. <laughs> because that's the conversation starter. <laughs> but when he explains to Galen why, because what Galen will eventually become, Galen then lets him know that what he's about to do to try to stop him from becoming Galactus, that the surfer is essentially becoming what it is that he hates. And even though Galen is away from becoming Galactus, he feels the universe calling him and he feels himself growing and transforming into who he will be. But even with this, he sympathizes with the surfer and he lets him know, and he lets him know that he understands that feeling of wanting to stop utter destruction, but if you're trying to defeat the dark with the dark, it's not gonna work. And that alone is really all the surfer needed to hear to come back out of it and pull Galen away from that dwarf star he's about to push him into. Because even though he doesn't know exactly how to do the right thing, and time not necessarily being on his side, what he does know is that the part of him that remains, that light that remains, is that he has to lean into that with everything that he has left. And to do so, he reaches back out to Ego for his help. And rather than explaining this with words, he opens his mind to Ego, who helps the surfer connect across the celestial plane, across the stars. Because at this point, much of the universe is experiencing exactly what he is. And even now, he can feel their fear. And so with the help of Ego, his plan is to channel that energy throughout the universe so it can flow through him. So that now, rather than fighting darkness with darkness, instead, he can fight the darkness with the remaining light. And essentially burn anything that threatens life. Which doesn't necessarily sound like a plan of killing the darkness, but rather finding a way to keep it at bay and prevent No from completely consuming the universe. And to which I gotta say, Good luck with that, buddy. <laughs> but that'll do it for this one, guys. And I mean, I gotta tell you, there's so many ways that I want this to pan out because I, I just want to see how they all play out. Like, I want the surfer to create this alternate reality where he takes that role of Galactus and he becomes the death that balances everything out. I want to see a what if no wins. And I also want to see a scenario where this all ties into the fallen one. But of course, it really wouldn't make much sense if all of that happened in the same story. But, you know, that's why we got spinoffs. Hey guys, welcome back. So now getting back into Silver Surfer Black, to where at this point we reached the finale, and that is nothing like what I expected, but not only is it surprising, but it's like shockingly satisfying. And I'm telling you, like if you didn't already know, like Donny Cates is a poet, and with him concluding this showdown with Noel, and doing so with a few nods to like your Stan Lee Mobius Silver Surfer, but also as I would say, a 
bit of Silver Surfer Requiem as well, it really just proves that this series is a work of art. So let's talk about it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squad up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so up to this point with us following the journey of the Silver Surfer, which had taken us all the way from present day, with the heroes getting attacked by the Black Order, which had sent the Silver Surfer and many others into a black hole, to where the Silver Surfer sacrificed himself to get the others out of there, which sent him alone millions of years back in time, to where lo and behold, he runs into Null, the god of the symbionts. And with doing so, to kind of state it gently, the Silver Surfer got the brakes beat off of him. And when this happened, Null gave the Surfer his own symbiont in an attempt to control the Surfer and recruit him for his own will and purpose, which at the time for No was essentially just taking the universe back and returning it to complete darkness like he had it before. But with the Surfer eventually escaping and his powers diminished from his travel back here in time, in addition to his battle with No, and the combination of all of these events destroying his shell and causing him to be undone, this then caused the clock to be ticking to not only how long he would last, but also to how long it would be until No returned and he would have to face him again. And after running into Ego the Living Planet, to whom he had quickly made an ally, Ego then helped the surfer to reach out to the rest of the universe and draw power from every living thing in order to compensate for the tremendous amount of power cosmic which the surfer had depleted up to this point. And so now at this time with Null drawing near, and the surfer who has more power on his side, but even still his physical state isn't getting better. And so now in this brief moment of solace, like memories go back through his mind, which extend all the way from his future past as well as his current past, and doing so with reminding him of his recent decision to not kill Gal before he became Galactus, which essentially would have been the first step to him giving into the dark. But with these memories that are coming back to him, they even stretch back as far to what appears to be like your standalone series, Silver Surfer Requiem. Which is pretty crazy because one, this is like a standalone series which had given us the death of the Silver Surfer, which we now at this point see him recall as a memory. And it's likely that this could have much to do with his mind kind of being pulled apart and him actually seeing that lifetime which the Watcher had told him about where he died alone. But the thing that makes this super significant within Silver Surfer Black is that at the time with this series, Silver Surfer Requiem, he had very much been in a similar place, both physically and mentally, to where at that time his body was breaking down and he had to process the concept of mortality, very similar to what he's dealing with now. And throughout that series, though Reed Richards and not even Galactus couldn't save him, this caused him to eventually cope with the inevitable, which also led us to find out at that time that with doing so that he wanted to spend his last hours back on his home world, Zen La. And really at this point in Silver Surfer Black, with his body breaking down with everything that he's recently been through and no getting ready to make his arrival at any moment in the mind of the surfer even though he's choosing the higher road in the solution to stand with the light he's still making his way into this battle with the mind state where he's thinking like okay you know what i just might not make it out of this or better yet he just knows that he's not gonna make it but at this point he's determined that there's no more running and that if this is truly his last hour then he's gonna use everything that he can in order to push no back as far as possible and with no closing in he takes takes the energy which the infant ego had helped him gather up, which collectively is a piece of energy from every living being in the universe, and allow that power to build up within him up until the moment to where his body can't take no more. And so after doing this, he charges at No, who's closing in with his Grendel, but with doing so only as a diversion to send No straight into Ego, and with doing so, he signals Ego to blast No with the heat from his inner molten core, which was really like your first wave of attack to allow the surfer to gain more power with buying him just a little bit more time rather than being executed prematurely. Because remember, aside from the fight, his body's already breaking down, which is already one clock that's ticking, but with this energy building up, that's another clock. And he really wants to make the most of the two so that he can maximize that final blow. And it's really like that fighting game where you're waiting for your special to charge up and you know you're not gonna win, but you still wanna get that special move off. And speaking of special moves, there comes a point where the surfer calls his board, which he turns into a sword, and he faces off against No, who of course is wielding the Necro Sword, aka the God Killer. And it is insane. Like, by far my favorite part in this fight. And to be honest, like, I don't know who the Silver Surfer was practicing with in order to get this good, but I do like the cosmic trail that the sword leads, which is very Mobius like with the art, but not to brush lightly over practicing, because if you think about it with No, like, I really couldn't tell you who he was sparring with back at this time either. But he did create the Necro Sword, so you'd imagine he'd know how to use it. And really, in comparison with the two, we know that Null has used a Necro 
saw before. But as far as the surfer, he probably should have turned that board into a different kind of weapon. <laughs> but in all seriousness, to the credit of Null, who at this point, I think it's safe to say that he's extinguished much light in the universe with the use of the Necro Sword, which is why he bests the surfer as far as moves. And with doing so, he impels the surfer who then sinks down into the Grendel to where immediately Null follows after. And when Null sinks in, it comes off pretty braggadocious because he's just going down like, yeah, I did that. Like, who he think he was coming at me? I made the Necro Sword. I'm like, you better ask about me out in these star clusters. Like, nowhere wasn't anywhere till I put it there. But with pulling the surfer down into the Grendel, Null then makes another attempt to bond the surfer with a symbiote so that he can then control him and induct him into his army. But the surfer uses everything that he has left in order to hold out so that he can make as big of a bang as possible. And when the light starts seeping through and forming into what is to be a new star that the surfer is releasing, Null immediately recognizes it and he's like, oh, you cosmic buster, you gonna do this to me? But when the surfer releases the star, there is nothing that Null can do about it. And as powerful as this blast is, once again, the surfer cannot kill him. But as powerful as this blast is, Null hangs on for a brief moment, which just shows this like ridiculous tenacity. But with doing so, he successfully sent Null even further into the far reaches of space. But after this victory, the surfer then crash landed on this barren planet to where he then removed from his chest the weapon which he was given by Ego, which was actually galactic seeds charged with the energy of billions of terrified worlds which he had intended to use as more than a weapon from the beginning because with these seeds that he's planting there's like a literal and a metaphorical purpose that are tied into it because moments just before his death as he plants these seeds on this barren planet and essentially gives it life he also does this in hopes that this world and many others will flourish and be a light that will forever stand against the dark and with doing this just before he can bust into like flames and vapors he names this world Zen La and with doing so essentially creating his home world as his last act before his death which much like the requiem series the silver surfer's life ends on his home world well kind of because check this out okay boom so the gases that released from zen la out into the universe they then made their way out to the different planets which galactus had consumed and they essentially rebirthed them within this timeline which is a process that had taken place over the course of eons but with this happening this was like the redemption for all the blood that was on his hands which couldn't be omitted but instead rather forgiven and later on a world which would be draven bar this essentially was the reason why they started to worship a silver god and so now recently i'd say seen someone ask like what exactly is Draven Barr and I'd seen someone ask this to Donny Cates on Twitter to where he had responded essentially that this was a nod to the crow which was written by James O'Barr which is super crazy because the crow whose real name is Eric Draven he was resurrected a year later after being brutally murdered on the day before Halloween which is the exact same day that this comic book came out October 30th the day before Halloween like how insane is that like that is wild who does that <laughs> apparently Danny Cates but in addition to that eons later reformed from the essence which was spread across the galaxy we eventually get the return of the surfer who at this point once he's returned he is back in black and he has now balanced the light with the dark and i have got to admit like he's looking like the fallen one right now because i swear if donny case ties his back around the thanos wins and this guy goes to throwing around thor's hammer then i am going to lose it because man like like i said donny cates is a poet and really just everything from the series itself to all the nods in between the lines and from that to the release date of the fifth issue like yo like this really got my head spinning right now because this whole thing was just thought out to a level of detail that is just insane like it's just insane like there's no other way i could put it but that'll do it for this one guys i'm about to just curl up on the floor and stare at the wall for like 30 minutes and really just attempt to process like what just happened here but let me know your guys thoughts down in the comments i want to hear you guys ideas on the fallen one theory i want to know what you guys think about the narrative overall but also some of your thoughts of where you think this could go as far as the new version of the surfer in the near future so let me know your thoughts below happy halloween and we'll do it again in the next one all right later